Okay, let's um, get started. Let's talk a little bit before we get into, I guess, our, our lesson for today. All right, so apparently, dun, dun, dun. Um, did I already talk about this? These links aren't working, right? These links, right. like you click them yeah, and, and they tell me uh, invalid link and Oh, I and I don't know why it's broken. So uh, I've reached out to DataCamp support, and um, they haven't told me anything yet. They just said thanks for con contacting us, which which is fine. Um, so I, you know, I don't I don't know how it's going to work. We'll we'll figure this out. Um, but anyway, in the meantime, just just do these courses, okay? There's another uh, pandas course. It's on like merging data frames, and uh, you know that's optional. I guess I can link that. But we'll say uh, these two, uh, you need to uh, to complete for for credit. Also, um, let's uh, um, go. I don't know how this works, but uh, okay. You guys need to uh, start forming teams, okay, for a group project. So we'll people? say three, three to a group, okay, um, up to three, okay. We'll say minimum two, two or three. <laughs> or you guys want, I don't want groups that are too huge. I, th I feel like, <laughs> huh? Five, 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 four, five, three, nine, four, <laughs> From zero to four. <laughs> I feel like once once you start going over four, um, people there will be a slacker who does nothing and just has everybody else carry them, right? And if it's if it's like it even happens with two, and you're just like why, why did I get paired with the worst? You know, I mean, brutal. Yeah. Okay. So anyway. Um, Group project, okay, so I want to say make groups of two or three, okay. Um, if you have trouble finding partners, or yeah, yeah, finding partners, um, you can use Piazza, okay, to search for teammates. Okay, and then what, um, and then somebody here, someone in the group should set up a GitHub repo. Okay. Uh, you know, one member should set up a GitHub repository and grant um, contributor access to teammates. Okay, and then um, what else is, uh, and I'll set up a, a schedule. We're not going to have a competition, okay, but I think Kaggle has uh, a great, a bunch of good data, data sets. You can find other data sets, but um, I would say, you know, as a group, just start exploring what data sets are available out there, okay? And we want to do some kind of data analysis project, okay? It doesn't have to be, you don't have to apply like crazy machine learning stuff. Like, that's an option, okay? But if you just do a, a, a good data analysis thing, um, you know, half of it should probably be exploratory, or if even more than half, it should be exploratory, just exploring the data and things. And then if you want to, and then some of it will be some data analysis, okay? Um, but the, the main goal of this for the end of the project is uh, I want to see that you have an understanding of what the data represents and understanding, uh, have demonstrate an ability to do exploratory data analysis with Python. And then if you want to apply some kind of um, you know, inferential data thing, whether it be linear regression or something more advanced, some machine learning, this and that, neural networks, whatever you want, 
that's fine, okay? Um, I'm more interested in correct and logical and reasoned thinking than I am by some flashy, like, ooh, I used a neural network, aren't you impressed? Um, I, yeah. I personally will not be impressed if you used a neural network and it was done incorrectly, all right? I would much rather have a simple linear regression done correctly and reasoned with, with good reasoning than some fancy method that, that doesn't make sense, okay? Because um, that's, that's what I fear is happening. Because data science is like such a hot, I don't know, and a seemingly lucrative career path, you know, you see all these, um, you know, like Coursera and Udemy thing, like every, like because I'm like browsing these things on the internet, like every single one of these YouTube ads are like targeted and it's like, are you thinking about a career in whatever, <laughs> you know, check out this course on Udemy. And, you know, I've taken a look at them and a lot of it emphasizes a little bit more like, I don't, I don't, I'm not dissing Udemy or anything like that, but uh, I fear that people might not have the statistical reasoning and and understanding before they just start throwing things into some fancy machine learning algorithm or something, hoping that it's going to spit out good results. Um, so anyway, um, so I I have to finish writing kind of the. Um, full description here, okay? But uh, begin uh, searching for uh, a data set to use, data set or multiple data sets, okay? Um, a good source is Kaggle, but you are not limited to that, okay? And you are not restricted to Kaggle, okay? So what, whatever you find out there that sounds interesting to you, okay? I would say, um, and it doesn't even have to be like huge, 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 okay? Like this is this is really a very open-ended project for you guys. Um, and and it's really the, the purpose is to get you guys comfortable with doing something like this in um, in Python, okay? So you're not restricted to Kaggle. Uh, there's a lot of good uh, data data sets there, but you know, there's a lot of other good public ones as well, and you know, if um, you want to explore things, you know, that's fine. Um, da uh, data Fest is coming up, and I don't know, I don't know what the legal status is of the data set that will be used, okay? Um, they might there there might be restrictions on 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 sharing that data file. However, if it turns out that there uh, it's not restricted, then then I'm open to allowing you to continue working on that. You have access to past data no, from the database. Data. Yeah. Is it uh, after afterwards? You have and is it still if you don't like if you put it other. put your thing because the the goal is to have your analysis. GitHub in a, in a public thing, so they, they might not be happy about that, okay? So, all right. So, anyway, good sources, Kaggle, a lot, pretty much everything on Kaggle is, has some kind of generally, if it's not like open source type or, uh, you know, there's some kind of generally publicly available license that you can use, okay? Um, the ultimate, the, the, um, the goal of the project is to have uh, publish a uh, Jupyter Notebook on uh, GitHub, okay? Showing the analysis, all right? Um, I would say at least 50% of the analysis should be exploratory in nature. Okay, and uh, and so you'll just be doing you know, kind of summarizing and exploring 
the data itself with summary statistics, summary stats, and um, graphs, etc. Okay, and then the rest will be um, some form of analysis. Okay. I, I should okay. Let me. Um, I won't write at least. I'll say approximately. <coughs> approximately fifty percent or more of the analysis should be exploratory in nature. Okay, and the rest will be some form of analysis. Could be uh, you could do fairly quote basic methods like multiple linear regression. Okay, you can also use fancier methods like neural networks, boosting, etc. Okay, and we can that will at least mention and explore some of these topics <coughs> topics later. But you can at least start looking for data sets and and looking for um, questions to ask and answer. In the analysis portion, and um, okay, uh, are there any questions on this so far? Okay, and then um, so yeah, get get together in a group, start looking for data sets that sound interesting. Uh, it's it's really open ended, and and then um, and, and get things going on GitHub, and make sure you guys can start. You know, pushing to uh, you know whatever it might be. Okay, uh, and then I'll uh, I'll post a little bit more of a detailed um, detailed thing. Okay, but uh, you're gonna make a ultimately you're gonna make the uh, analysis that's gonna be on. Um, published on GitHub, a Jupyter Notebook, okay? And then kind of a, a slide presentation and then a little five minute video, okay? Uh, that, that you'll make as a, as a group. So um, the five minute video is of us, like presenting the slides? Or? We'll, we'll leave it uh, up to your creative freedom, okay? Mm. It, it, um, it says a five minute video presentation of the analysis and findings, okay? And, and, and I'll, I'll define some of these things, at least certain of some of the criteria, uh, a little bit more, more clearly, um, and that that will be published to YouTube. Basically, the goal is to get everything in, on some kind of public platform, and these are all going to be things that you can at least, if you don't have a job lined up yet, you can at least reference these things and say like, here's something that I worked on, um, at least with a partner or something. And this is what, what we came up with, and and the the goal is that it would be um, well reasoned and well thought out, and things like that. Okay. Um, okay. Are, are there any questions before we uh, we go on here? Okay. I hope um, one thing. Um, you can go on Kaggle and also click kernels. This is kind of what I'm hoping for is what your reports will kind of look like. Okay, so if you go to Kaggle kernels, um, sort by, by let's do uh, votes. Okay, and so here, um, so here's it says comprehensive data exploration. With Python or something like that. Okay. And or introduction. Okay, well let's just click this one. All right. And and so these are there's RMD ones and Python things. Okay. And basically, you know, it starts off with um, some uh, some text, and then they start by importing all of these things, and then they um, <coughs> He just does a exploratory uh, analysis. So here, 
So he describes kind of the, the data set that we're, uh, we're looking at, okay? And, um, and then, you know, he just starts by describing the summary statistics and then just showing some, some plots. This is all exploratory in nature. And in all of this, there is some explanation and thought saying kind of this is what we're, we're noticing about, you know, whatever it is that we're doing. So we're here, we're looking at some real estate information and and then you know he starts doing a little bit more complex data analysis not data analysis but it's still uh, ex ex exploratory in nature okay and uh, anyway go ahead and read um, on Kaggle look at some of these they, they call them kernels and I'm not sure why why they're called a kernel but um, but I would say sort by sort by the votes okay and these ones that are um, have high votes are, are generally high quality in nature, okay? And, uh, and look through this and you'll get a sense of what a good um, kind of uh, analysis looks like. And this, this is an R, but it's kind of the same idea. You've got this, there's uh, a lot of description explaining <coughs> what exactly they're doing with each of these commands and then talking about the reasoning be behind um, the, uh, the, the things that they, they've cho chosen to do in terms of their, their analysis here, okay? Um, there's a lot of like low quality ones also. <laughs> and um, so if you go to like recently created, okay, I don't, I, well I don't wanna pull up some some person who actually worked hard on their thing. But, um, you know, a lot of these, the ones that are kind of new, m may or may not be, um, so if it's just a whole bunch of code, okay, well, so this one, this person actually put in some, some text. Although, all right. But sometimes people will just produce these notebooks where it's just code with no explanation and uh, and we don't. I don't want that. Okay. I want. I want to see uh, some explanation behind uh, whatever it is that you guys are doing. Okay. Um, all right. Anyway, uh, that's that's what we're ultimately aiming for, and um, and so you know, along the way we've got to learn the tools in order to uh, to complete this. But you can at least start uh, thinking about the data sets, right? And um, you know, uh, you can start to do your analysis in R if you want, because that's probably what you're a little bit more comfortable with. But again, the uh, the goal is to do a complete analysis in Python and get get comfortable enough in Python to to complete such a thing. All right, let me. Um, Start up our Jupyter Notebook. So my notebook is empty right now, or, or very close to empty. Here, let me um, let me upload <coughs> this to uh, my Git. Okay, so if you want to uh, follow along, you can go to uh, my GitHub and under stats131, there'll be uh, some CSV files that, that we're going to import here, okay? All right, so um, we'll start by uh, importing our NumPy and our Pandas libraries. 
and then um, and we can read in a CSV file using pd from pandas, the read.csv uh, function, and we just provide it the name of our of our CSV file. This assumes that the uh, the CSV is in the uh, the current working directory, which which it is. And then when you print that out, uh, this is what the uh, the file looks like. So just so this is exactly what the uh, the CSV file looks like. So if I open up, so this is what it looks like. I've got ID one two three four treatment AAB AABB FMFM five three eight nine. Okay, and so here it has this, and um, yeah, let's uh, let's get rid of this. And so we can explore. You know, we can ask for trials dot index. Okay. And um, and that's going to be the uh, zero one two three. Um, we can subset uh, and pull out things like treatment and pull out uh, those variables uh, accordingly. Okay. What we can do is we can also reshape the uh, the data frame using um, this pivot method, okay? So we can do something called trials.pivot. And what pivot will do is you specify, you know what, I don't want the index to be 0, 1, 2, 3. We can specify we want the index to be equal to the treatment column, okay? And in this case, there's only two unique values in the treatment column, and so we're at, our resulting table is only going to have two unique rows here, or two, two rows here. And then we're going to say the, the columns take uh, the values in the uh, current gender uh, variable and set that to be our columns. And then inside the table, the values that we are going to have will be the response. Okay, and if I do this, it uh, it produces this pivot. Okay, or so this um, the the notebook defaults to printing it out this way. If you say print out this result, it this is what it looks like here. Okay, but but that's that's what we see. We see the treatments, which are um, A A B B, become our index. And then um, the gender becomes our columns here. Okay, and then this variable ID, which exists in the original data frame, is nowhere to be seen because we didn't we didn't specify it anywhere here. Okay, if um, if instead I just say trials pivot, okay, and I don't give it the uh, the values, I say index, oops, index equals treatment. <laughs> and columns equals gender, and I run that. All right, let me uh, let me throw that inside print. Okay, well, we will have um, basically a hierarchical column structure. Okay, so treatment does indeed form our index A and B, but as far as our columns go, we have F and M. For gender under ID, and we see we have the values one, two, three, four, which uh, occurred in our original CSV, and then we have um, the values for response, you know, five, three, eight, nine. So basically, this this part of the table shows up over here, and then we didn't tell it to, that we only want the values to be response, so they are uh, they are kept as well. Okay. Um, let me. We'll call this TP, and then print TP, and then we can see, you know, what kind of values do we have? <coughs> so we could, you know, we could transpose this. Yes. Um, so like, 
Is the example you gave in line 10 uh -huh. for the ID part, what if there were like two different records that had like A and female? Would it just list like both of those IDs? Uh, yeah, it, it would produce an error, okay? Oh. Okay. Um, so if you do pivot, yeah. Um, so if, in here we had an A and an F, and uh, and if I did a if I did a pit, so here let me um, I didn't actually make this CSV file, but let me see if I can uh, kind of make this up here. All right, so let me um, copy this. It's a good good question here. All right, so let's. Um, All right, so let's uh, add a row here. Okay, so I just want to kind of copy this. So we've got, um, we'll have another A and an M, and here's a three and an eight, and an A and an F, and this is a nine, and then I've got B, 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 uh, F, M, F, F, and what do we have? One, eight, four, and six. <coughs> okay, so here I've got multiple lines that have A and F, and multiple lines that have A and M, and things like that. Okay. So we'll, uh, we'll close that. All right, so I will say, um, we'll call this uh, more trials will be equal to pandas uh, read underscore CSV, and we'll read in trials 03.csv. Oh, here, let me, uh, let me add that. So that'll be available on GitHub. Okay, so here, here's uh, what we have here. And then if we wanted to try to uh, do a pivot here, okay, so if I did more trials um, dot pivot, and we say we specify index equals treatment. Um, columns equals gender and values equals response. Okay, it gives us an error. It says, um, oh man, it's got a lot of stuff, but basically it says index contains duplicate entries and it cannot reshape. It's trying to form an index based on on this, okay? And so what we would have to use is we'd have to use the um, command pivot underscore table, okay? So if we do more trials and we do a pivot underscore table, here let me look up pandas pivot table, okay? The um, the uh, documentation says, you know, take your data, you can specify values and index and columns, and then um, there's something called an aggregate function, okay? The ag function says, what do we use to kind of, if we got multiple things with the same index, how are we going to aggregate these together, okay? So if we wanted to, um, to do this, we could do, um, index is equal to treatment and columns equals gender and then we can say uh, values equals response and then our ag function could be um, will be sum okay 
and we'll just um, so if we look at AF so we have a 5 and a 9 here and we can see does that indeed equal 14 it does right and then um, but you could um, use a different aggregate function you can use I think the mean is the default anyway okay and so you know what is uh, how does this get aggregated here um, you know there, there were two entries with a and f so divide those and you get seven and then I think there were three entries with b and f and so you know divided by three we get three point six six seven and so on and so forth okay so we can uh, we can aggregate things using um, pivot table all right so which is uh, which is a handy uh, handy function to have I don't have you guys ever used pivot tables in Excel yes. yeah yeah okay so this used to be like um, well it, it, it's still amazing I feel like that's how I got my uh, first job I was like I know how to use pivot tables and <laughs> <laughs> they're like you're hired um, so but I you know um, I, I only knew like pivot tables in Excel 2007 or something and, and now it's like so different now um, but anyway um, you've got you we have pivot tables here in uh, in Python as well um, there's other things so you can um, stack and unstack your columns and reshape our reshape our data here okay so um, so let me go back and um, pull up our first our first data frame here okay we've got trials and um, and we can uh, set the index ourselves okay so um, we can do trials and use the function set index and when you set an index you can specify um, just one okay and then you can say print um, so so you uh, you set the index and uh, and you say you know what is uh, what does trials it doesn't look like it um, has affected anything but you can ask indeed is um, why did this not work? Oh, I got it. Um, sorry. Let's call this trials two. Okay. So um, when we uh, when we say take trials and we set the index and we capture that um, and we print that out, we can we can see that it it has indeed um, used. Uh, the index that we set as the thing, and uh, and here it it's in this order fm fm, and so what we want to do is we want to um, actually sort it by our index. Okay, so we can do um, trials two dot sort um, sort index, and I think I uh, have to do this. Okay. And let's print this out. Okay. And I think so. Uh, yeah, sort index just so all of these things. It's you, so until you get uh, used to them, you are not sure if it returns a copy or if it. Uh, you know if it if it returns the thing okay but um, so here here we have this and um, I should probably capture our sorted index this way okay okay so um, by setting the index, it kind of restructures our thing, and uh, and then you can sort uh, by the index that way. You can also um, 
create compound indices. Is this okay with the uh, setting the index and sorting it? You can create a compound index, meaning um, you can have multiple columns to identify something. So kind of like um, we can uh, to create kind of for people, uh, we often we will use the first name and the last name as a way to kind of index our people rather than just going off of first name only or off of last name only because there might be du duplicates and stuff. Yes? I have a quick question. So when you, did, you were saying about copies, so for trial two, is it like a copy of trial one but then you add it? Would, does that not affect trials? No, yeah. So trials is unaffected. So if I do uh, print trials, this is this is unaffected. Okay, and if I, you know, what is the index of trials, we can see it's still uh, kind of the um, integer index, whereas um, when we set the index, it makes a copy, so it doesn't affect trials itself, and we captured that copy as trials too. Okay. So how do we get used to, like, when it's going to affect the original copy or, or adjust the copy or both of them? Is yes, just just reason? by usage, just by usage, yeah. So there's it's, no uh, like systematic reasoning to it. That you um, know. Yeah, it's not always um, in general. Okay, so so we have things called mutable objects and immutable objects. Generally, mutable objects will be modified, and immutable ones are will will not be modified, and you only get. Um, you only get, uh, they, they, they remain, you get copies. So um, indices on a data frame are immutable. So um, here, I should, I'll have to organize my notes here. Um, data frame indices are immutable. So if Meaning, um, so if I do uh, trials two dot index, okay, it looks like this. And if I ask, you know, what's the um, trials two index on trials two? What's the uh, the the value in um, at position two? Okay, it tells me that that's an M, right? Um, if I say, all right, you know what? I want to change this up. And I want to set this equal to F. Okay. It it kicks back an error, and the error says uh, index does not support mutable operations, meaning you can't modify these things. Okay. So um, so you can't um, You can't like change change them up. All, all we can do is uh, is is just have the index and, and it's set. Okay. Um, yes. Is there a set index uh, function? There there is a set index, so you can set the index for a data frame. The data frame allows you to set the index, but the index itself is immutable. Okay. So. Um, so we have, so here we can set trials three to be trials dot set index, and we can say you know set the index to be uh, gender. Or I think that's what we just did. Okay, set index to be uh, treatment. Or here, actually, let me show you. We're going to do a compound index. <coughs> It will be the combination of treatment and gender. Okay, so that will be um, trials three, and I can say print trials three, and we can see that it has um, arranged them by treatment and gender. Okay. Um, it's default just alphabetized, right? Yes, the default is. Uh, It'll arrange these in alphabetical order. We can say, you know, what are the what is the index of trials three? OK, 
okay? And it's a, it's a multi-level index where the levels are A, B, and F and M, and then it's arranged 0, 0, 1, 1, meaning A, A, B, B, and then this part goes F, M, F, M. So do you remember how um, factors are stored in R? It, it's similar to that. You've got these, these levels, and, uh, and they correspond to kind of integer values in here. Okay, um, we can further complicate things, oh, no. right? Uh, so we got, so if I ask for trials three and we, and we print this out, okay, we have this. There's a, there is a command called unstack, okay? And so right now the, uh, the gender is, uh, is kind of stacked together here. And so we can um, we can say we want to unstack this, and what will what this will accomplish is that it now takes what was in a column here and it or, um, takes the gender column and it, it throws it out as column headings up here. Um. Okay, the, all of these. Um, this chapter especially, so this this is covered in um, the data camp thing, but and you, you play around with it a little bit on data camp, but this chapter especially, you've got to just kind of take a data set and just like play with it and break it, see what throws you errors, see what see what the uh, the behaviors are. Okay, um, you know what would happen if I did uh, unstack level on the treatment? Okay. So now um, genders, gender forms over here, and then the treatment we get uh, thrown that way. Okay, and then you know again, all of this stuff. Just go on Google, and you can say, what exactly does this do? Right, pandas .data frame unstack. Okay, and it says pivot a level of the uh, hierarchical index labels and returns a data frame having a new level of column labels, right? And so it, <clears throat> it, it, it's it got some good examples here, in my opinion, um, kind of showing how this this stuff works and there's uh, related things, okay? The stack is just kind of the, uh, the opposite of the, uh, the unstack. Okay, so let me um, so if you uh, if we capture this unstacked thing so if we say this and we say you know print unstacked we no not unstacked Unstacked trials. We have this, and um, and as expected, you can take this, and there's going to be a um, a stack method, and we could say stack. Uh, in this case, we're going to have to stack by treatment. Okay, and that that makes sense. Um, we can just kind of see, you know, what would happen if I tried something else? What if I tried to stack by um, um, response? Okay, what would happen? All right, it says I can't do that. <laughs> um, it says level response not found. Okay, because um, as far as the kind of the index goes, it it doesn't exist. Right. So here, let's just go back. I'll ask print unstack trials. This is what it looks like. What is the uh, the index here? Okay, the index here is here uh, unstacked trials. Um, um, columns uh, as the the columns have the um, the names uh, treatment 
in here as far as the the, the levels go. Okay. So the uh, gets uh, gets thrown in the uh, the columns there. Okay. Um, let's see. What else can I uh, do with our data frames? Um, we can uh, swap swap the levels in our kind of our multi-stacked things. I think um, trials three. And we ask, uh, what are the we got index? Okay, so we have this, and we can uh, we can swap um, swap the levels. So let me let's see. Is that is there anything now that doesn't doesn't exist? This, how does swap level work? Okay, so you take a, a multi index and um, <coughs> and you will swap these levels. Okay, swap levels I and J in a multi index. I think if you if you just leave it blank, I think it it succeeds. <laughs> okay, so um, so if I do swap level and ask for the uh, the returning index, you can see that it has swapped um, the uh, the gender and the treatment um, levels for the uh, for our multi-level index. Okay. And then if we did sort, it would go F. Right, and then if you did uh, sort underscore index, so if you did swap level and sort index, then um, then it will sort them appropriately. Cool. Okay. So. So so lots of uh, kind of summary abilities uh, exist uh, within the pandas um, data frame structure. Okay, so. Uh, using pivot or pivot table, you can kind of aggregate the things, and then you can start kind of swapping and sorting um, the, the way we arrange these kind of summary values uh, here as well. All right, we'll um, we'll end here for now, and then um, I guess we'll wrap up kind of our data frame coverage. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, start working through those data frame chapters on uh, on data camp. There's there's a lot. To uh, pandas and stuff that we won't have time to cover everything in great depth in uh, class. So. Okay.